Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar in which we'll demo technologycatalog.com and specifically focus on a number of technologies that help, can help you reduce your turnaround duration. My name is Vincent van Beuzekom. I'm the co-founder of Deployment Matters. At Deployment Matters, we focus on supporting technology end users and technology suppliers in becoming more successful in deploying technologies. We do this through our consultancy service, which is supported by the technology catalog, which is one of our main activities. I want to start with a practical note. If you have questions during the session, you can post these using the chat functionality on the right. Unfortunately, it's not possible for you to ask questions uh, verbally. In the session, I will be supported by Fred Gabriels from Tooth Rhineland Sonovation, who will speak about high temperature inspection, and Dusa Majerski from Adroptech, who will introduce their ATEC certified cleaning robot. After every session, we will pause and give you an opportunity to ask questions. I would now switch to the technology catalog. To help potential end users in the energy industry make life easy and find technologies that are already out there in the marketplace and may be used by some of their competitors, we set up the Technology Catalog web platform earlier this year. The Technology Catalog essentially provides access to a large database of technologies that are structured in a number of modules that are aligned with themes within the industry. So you can see on the screen here, there are themes, for example, around maintenance and turnarounds, topic of today, but also completely uh, different aspects in the industry, like the subsurface and wells uh, module, logistics, digitalization, storage tanks, and health and safety and environment. And actually, the number of modules is steadily um, growing on a monthly basis. The way that the technology catalog is structured is that in every module, you'll find a number of sub themes related to the topic. So if we look at maintenance and turnarounds uh, specifically, you'll find sub themes around civil maintenance, industrial cleaning and desanding, corrosion control and fabric maintenance, inspection, mechanical, proactive monitoring, welding, and working at height. And as you can already see, as I was scrolling down, every technology is represented by a little uh, card on the page, essentially uh, giving the key information about a technology that may trigger you to look at further details, which are available on the actual technology page that belongs uh, to the technology. I will not go into detail about this specific uh, technology because we will not discuss it today, but I'll use this page about the innovative washer that High Talk is, is marketing to show you how a, a page is typically structured. You'll see a short introduction about the technology, a number of pictures showcasing the technology, typically a link from the supplier to a video giving more details, the key pros and cons. On the right hand side, the key information about the technology uh, provider and the option to directly contact them. On the left hand side, you see specifications that can at a later stage actually be compared head to head with a similar um, uh, technology so that end users can really see the subtle di differences between two potentially similar technologies. This information is all provided and owned by the uh, technology supplier, who is also tasked to keep it up to date. In addition to that, we provide an overview, as you can see here below on the right-hand side, of actual end users that are already using this technology, 
and the opportunity for independent industry experts or end users to leave reviews about the technology, either based on their own end user experience or just by simply after having assessed it from an industry expert uh, uh, perspective. Access to the technology catalog is free for end users. They can simply register using their company email address for a free account, after which access will be uh, activated. And the technology suppliers pay an annual fee to actually present their technology uh, within the, uh, the catalog. In order to protect the suppliers from, uh, um, let's say, uh, fake uh, reviews, we only accept company email addresses and every account is actually validated. So this means that we typically bounce Hotmail, Gmail, those type of uh, addresses. So please bear that in mind uh, if you're planning to, uh, to register for, for an account. As mentioned when we kicked off, we would also like to use this opportunity to highlight two specific technologies from the catalog um, that can actually help you reduce turnaround duration. And I would like to start by handing over to Fred Gabriels from uh, Two Vreinlings Innovation, who will tell more about their high temperature inspection capabilities. Okay, thank you very much, Vincent. Um, I'm Fred Gabriels, Managing Director from TUV Rhineland Sonovation. Um, TUV Rhineland Sonovation is a highly specialized advanced NDT company. And, um, well, we are with a few techniques and concepts um, available on the website from uh, the technologycatalog.com um, where you can find us with the unique techniques. One of them is high temperature inspections, which we developed over the years. Um, we are talking about high temperature weld inspection and high temperature corrosion mapping. We do that with ultrasound techniques and pulsed eddy current techniques. Um, well, we are doing this for many years and uh, on the go we further develop um, the technology. Up to now we have standardized the technology for either weld inspections and corrosion mapping up to 350 degrees C and above that um, we work with samples with artificial defects to test our uh, uh, settings and to see if it what we can find and what we cannot find. Uh, it is as important to know what you cannot find as what you can find. Um, that's what we have worked out. Well, the technology is extremely suitable for um, um, uh, um, monitoring and finding of, of uh, cracking and problems in your refinery or in your plant in general. That's one of the applications where you can use it for. An other solution is, is where we aim for more and more in combination with the so-called minimum intervention strategy for inspection concept is to reduce your turnaround time. And that's come down to the, to the fact that you try to replace your inspections you normally do during your turnaround. You try to do them already when you before your turnaround starts and when you are still in production. The pros and cons are clearly mentioned on the website there, reduction of your turnaround plan, uh, turnaround time, avoiding unplanned shutdowns, online monitoring of indications. Um, I want to give you a few examples of work we did um, for one of the larger refineries <laughs> from, from, uh, from Shell uh, here in Europe. Uh, we are doing online inspections now already as we speak for to for the preparation of the turnaround in 2019 so that means that that we do the regular inspections normally done during the turnaround now um, this gives them the advantage to shorten turnaround time on one side but also to prepare themselves better so that they have less surprises during the turnaround savings are huge um, with regard to uh, uh, the winning of production time by reducing turnaround uh, turnaround time. Another example is of crack monitoring for a large refinery in South Africa, where they had cracking in a steam line in a, in the inside of bends of the steam line or more bends, and we monitored it. We monitored these cracking for them so that they could continue with the production, 
and then when they decided to repair it online they welded around sleeves around it and we validated the inspection of these sleeves at the temperature where the line was on 325 degrees c so we could do an official pre-service esme inspection with a fully validated procedure for them another application we have as an example is partially filled welds at inspection at preheat temperature. So this is especially of interest when you have golden wells, um, which are on the critical part of your planning, and then we can inspect them when they are already for one third filled. So that if you have any repair in the root area, that you can do that straight away and that you don't have to wait till your weld is completely finished and then cooled down. And then you do normally your NDT inspection, you come to the solution, you have to gouge it out and you lose uh, easily one to two days of time. So that is uh, partly filled weld inspections between 150 and normally 180 degrees C. If we go further down um, with regard to uh, the specifications of the technology, talking about um, weld inspections with time of flight diffraction and phased array um, and corrosion mapping with ultrasound straight beam probes and then all thickness measurements, we also have the so-called pulsed eddy current capabilities um, well accuracies are uh, similar as uh, with at ambient temperature in general speaking well areas of application i have discussed our equipment is gnome atex certified so that means we need hot work permits if you are in an uh, explosion environment um, the, um, you can use it but normally under esme and the european codes we use that for in-service inspections as a guideline but if you, like I gave the example for ESME, if you validate your procedure on a high temperature, that means that your sample also should be on the, te the same temperature, um, then you can also use it as an official pre-service inspections. Wall thicknesses from six millimeters up to 250 or even thicker uh, is no problem. The thinner wall thicknesses are in general more difficult in relation to the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the thinner the wall thickness, the more difficult the inspection will become. And you can also use it for uh, monitoring, similar level uh, for as for regular inspections, um, a similar level of acuity or repeatability, better said. Um, temperature range is up to 485 degrees C, but not to forget we start from minus 150 degrees C. Uh, so also extreme cold is um, non-standard inspection where we can support you with. Well, this is in brief. Um, our uh, one of our specialized uh, services we offer you can find more of our services in the catalog so i invite you to have a look there and see what else we can offer to you if you have any questions you can ask them now you can type them in and i will try to answer them thanks fred let's just pause there and see if there are any questions for you right now so please, if you have any questions, post them in the, in the chat box on the right. Fred, can you to read the question or do you want me to read it out? Well, I don't see any questions, to be honest. Okay, then uh, I'll, I'll read it out to you. So, um, Caroline Vermeide is asking, she's interested to, know, to learn more about what you had to do to convince your customers to change over to this new technology. Ah, okay, yeah, I see the question now as well. Well, what we uh, normally do, we start with a sample with artificial defects representative for the object for inspection, and then we prove to the client that we can find what we what we want to find or what the client wants us to find so they can see it live that we validate the procedure if they are interested yeah, do you see the second part of her question as well so it's not about the actual application but more the, the transition in the uh, the way of working yeah, the, from the new technologies, yeah, the, um, to, to change to that, um, well, when it's driven on an incident, for example, crack monitoring, then, then we follow the way as, we, as we're saying. If we talk about um, applying high temperature inspections, 
um, as a replacement for regular inspections you normally do during a turnaround, then um, um, we need to uh, talk with all the stakeholders, but most important is that there is a top-down push by the plan manager who is responsible for the overall because you increase a bit with your cost for inspection, but your turnaround time reduces and your production time increases. So it needs a top-down push. Uh, what we have learned to, to if you really change from a uh, your normal, let's say, inspection strategy. All right. Thanks for that. And thanks, Carleen, for, uh, for the question. Any more questions for Fred? We can also uh, save, them, uh, save them for the, for the end, where there will be an opportunity to ask questions as well. I would now like to uh, introduce Dusan Majerski um, from Adroctech. And Adroctech have um, developed an ATEX certified cleaning robot that can be uh, can be used, for example, in uh, in storage tanks. Um, but I'll leave the uh, further details to uh, Dusan. So, Dusan, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you, Vincent. <coughs> I like to introduce not only myself but also my colleague uh, Vladimir is Hello. here as a developer of the ATEX robot. Zone Zero. We started uh, five years ago with development of this robot for Atex Zone Zero because we we found it. I, I I had imagined that it is not possible to clean oil tanks manually. It was the reality five six year ago, years ago that as a minimum 80, 90 percent of oil tanks were cleaned uh, manually. Uh, this dangerous carcinogenic area uh, is very terrible and dangerous for the people. We have been working over 20 years in nuclear industry where it's radiation and it is similar uh, bad environment for people. So we have used a lot of uh, robotics, robot, uh, a lot of uh, remotely operated vehicles or manipulators for performing of control, sludge removal or checking, sampling and other uh, procedures, but with the entry of the man because uh, the people are, are uh, under health authority control and it doesn't exist in the nuclear industry up to now. By, but our vision was to introduce a robotics to oil industry and we started with the most <laughs> difficult issue. It means maybe robot for attack zone zero, but we, we have done it. Three years ago, we started with the certification and finished certification of first attack zone zero robot in the world, in the Europe, but practically in the world. And after three years, we have manufactured another three. So now we are working uh, four robots and our SO systems in uh, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, Germany. So they have cleaned over 40, maybe 50 oil, big oil tanks and uh, other chemical product tanks, uh, practically with very high reduction of entry of men into the tanks. Uh, the technology consists from the uh, robot. This is a small demonstration. You can see it. It's a small 3D uh, model. Uh, this is uh, a robot which is moved by hydraulic power in the tank suck the uh, sludge with suction head and practically a robot is a carrier of the suction hose so the vacuum suction truck and replace the manual work of maybe six eight people inside in the dangerous area because it is working and remotely controlled the rover has three tv cameras on board and control the situation uh, at the suction head and also behind the rover. Uh, rover is connected with uh, TV signals and uh, hydro power uh, hoses to the cabin. Cabin is a uh, practically uh, 20 foot container, the ISO container, which is uh, prepared for the transport, transportation of the whole system with the robot. 
but there is an uh, operator room inside with TV screens for operator, which is which, uh, the operator is sitting very comfortably in some cases, but it costs a little bit more money, this comfortable seat. <laughs> and uh, could work uh, eight or 12 hours per day. It is important because you are, uh, you will save the money with the long, uh, longer work. And practically three operate, operators, three, three guys are ready for operate the whole system for two, three or four weeks for cleaning also big tanks like uh, with diameter 90 meters. Uh, the cabin has uh, operator room with air conditioning, so good work in the in the summer, good work in the winter. And this is a good working condition for, for humans inside and uh, to make less mistake are us in the in the worst conditions. Uh, inside in the cabin is also a hydraulic power pack for powering of the of the uh, robot. There is uh, electronics for control of speed, control of uh, power, and uh, there is industrial computer also for checking everything. And for the future, we are preparing a visual control of the obstacles behind the rover to stop automatically the movement of the robot if will be needed so uh, I don't I don't have imagine about self-driving robot in the oil tank but some uh, practical issues will be implemented in the, in the short future uh, this is a very short description of uh, product we have the name is SOT it means equipment set for uh, remotely control removal of oil sludge and uh, the advantages of the systems are the uh, high cut of the sludge removal cost. It means only three people for 10, 12 hours per day paid by uh, owner of the company or responsible or officer, finance officer. Uh, maybe 14, 50% time reduction in the total duration of the oil tank cleaning. So it is also important. And uh, the, for me, the similar importance or maybe more is a reduction of the uh, high risk of stuff of contamination exposure to the carcinogenic uh, substances because oil sludge is carcinogenic uh, after a few years uh, many people could be could be really uh, influenced very negatively this uh, robotic system is uh, quite simple uh, because uh, the price is also acceptable for the uh, for the small companies, not only for big companies with uh, a few thousand people. So with big budget, uh, our company is uh, our SOD is uh, focused also also for small companies cleaning maybe two three oil tanks per year. Uh, and the uh, return of investment is very fast, maybe one, two years. So mm, I think no problem for introduction in the, in the general uh, oil tank cleaning. Uh, Robert has also four uh, TV cameras for uh, absolute control of the work inside in the, in the oil tank. Uh, ATEX camera, our cameras are also certified for ATEX of zero and uh, uh, what more? Maybe I am waiting for the question because uh, Vincent catalog is very good and everything is described very well. So uh, I can read the, the description, but I, I like to spend time maybe with discussion with you if you have a question. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dusan. Let's see if there's already a, a question. So there's a question again from uh, from Carlin. Yes, you see it, yes, I, yeah. yes, yes. I see, uh, but all people see the questions, yes? Yes, do you see so, the questions on the right or do you want me to read it yes, for yes, you? Yes, yes, okay. yes, I see. So uh, we provide, uh, we, we sell the robot, but before selling of the robot, the training of the, of the staff is included for Two, three, or four days—it depends on the on the on the staff and experience with some uh, 
uh, maybe remotely control toys or with uh, joystick. joystick and with work uh, playing the games. So maybe it is better for young people which have uh, experience with uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, with PlayStation. So the people are trained and uh, we are uh, satisfied that the performance of the work will be good. Uh, system is simple, is robust and uh, free of some potential mistakes for the, for the operators. Okay, and I think yeah, the second part of a question is around who do you see as your um, uh, your clients? So do you uh, the, the I think you've sold it now to industrial cleaning contractors. Do you see them as your main clients or actually the tank owners? Uh, I think that uh, tank owners are happy from uh, this technology because uh, our custom our uh, actual customers, uh, ST Cleaning and uh, ICI services from uh, Rotterdam. As I know, they have a big advantage at the uh, providers of the oil tanks like Exxon, BP, Shell, uh, Wopak and many more. Uh, they have advantage, they, they are using robotics and they replace a, a simple manual work by uh, less risk robotic application. So, uh, owners are maybe happy, I, I hope so. They are saving money because uh, work is performed faster with less risk. And uh, But the final destination for us is a service company or service companies because they probably have to, have to buy our product and uh, work with them. But at the same time, maybe just building on that, just a personal question, I can also imagine that some of these companies actually see it as a threat, is they typically make money on selling man hours to the end users for cleaning their, their tanks. So an efficiency gain there is not always in their interest. Is there anything you can, you can share on that, on how you work with both the, uh, yeah, the end users and the um, uh, cleaning contractors to, uh, to accelerate deployment of your robot? Uh, we are looking for these ways, uh, for this for this uh, uh, solution, how to how to improve this uh, deployment. Uh, maybe your uh, activity is uh, will be very helpful for this, not only for the service companies but also for the providers and owners of the of the of the uh, oil tanks or gas tanks or uh, diesel tanks. Uh, I have seen, I saw a video with the cleaning of the ST cleaning in the big uh, diesel tank or gasoline tank at Wopak. At the end of the video, the director of the Netherlands uh, Wopak uh, said, why we didn't use this uh, robot so earlier? Why only now? So it's a question how these people, these owners will be ready to change uh, all technology for the new one and save uh, health of the people because it is about the safety first about the safety money are not the first but uh, you know everyone is uh, talking that uh, safety first this is the this is the logo of the all conferences all the of the all uh, papers all uh, in all journals but reality is a little bit different so i i am looking for a good solution also for uh, Owners of the tanks. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is on YouTube. Uh, uh, our, our partner, Estee Cleaning, is uh, very active on YouTube. And if you use uh, Estee Cleaning on YouTube, you will see practically all videos uh, they made. Yeah. We can share a link after the uh, after the call to the uh, because indeed ST uh, Cleaning has I saw recently very beautiful footage also from the robot in action it, and it gives a very good uh, yeah, demonstration on how it takes away the uh, the sludge so that's something we can uh, we can add to um, uh, the follow up uh, note and share that with you, uh, Caroline. 
Uh, what is Casos, please? I don't, I, I don't know Casos. Just a uh, contractor. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We are out. We, we are not. It's not inside. But uh, I am open for for communication. I am open also for tea. For two weeks ago, I I, I took part in the conference in uh, uh, Munich in Germany. It was a TIF conference, uh, German TIF conference about uh, tank cleaning and about safety. And I started a short communication with a representative of the, with the main manager of the conference, Mr. Salata, that I like to communicate with TIF because TIF is responsible for the, for the control and safety control of the, of the ATEX uh, equipment. And uh, TIF could be maybe a, maybe some kind of reach or maybe some kind of uh, help for us for introducing of the of the not only new technology but also much more safe technology in the in the in the industry oil industry. And I am looking also for other 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 help. Okay, good. Um... Carlene, is it okay if I connect Dusan to you outside of the call so you can follow up on the uh, Contractor Alliance? Oh, wait, Caroline, if you wait for the send response. us uh, your we'll email make, contact, yeah, there we, uh, we, we could, we could yeah. speak and we could uh, communicate. Yeah. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Any other questions for uh, for Dusan, for Fred, or myself from uh, any of the other participants? I see no further questions. In that case, I would like to thank Fred and uh, Dusan for your contribution to this uh, to this webinar. And uh, yeah, I would like to highlight to uh, to the participants that if you do not have an account, uh, you can register uh, for for free and gives you full access to the uh, to the catalog. If you do have any further questions or suggestions for future webinars, topics you would like to be uh, highlighted in, in future uh, webinars, please let us know. And uh, we hope to see you again in the, uh, in the future webinars. Thank you, uh, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Vincent. Thank Bye. You very much. Bye.